Hi, <laughs> welcome back. I would ideally have a glass of wine in this video, but it's really hot. Yeah. Good morning. How are you today? It's a beautiful day. It's always a beautiful day. Today I have a video that I'm very excited for and that is how to fall in love with reading and how to make time for it. But before we get into it, I'd like to have a quick word from today's sponsor, Book of the Month. So Book of the Month is a very popular and fastly growing book service for readers like myself. Hopefully you too. If you're not, you will be by the end of this video. Their mission is to help promote new and emerging authors whilst also matching readers to discover new books that they'll love. And I love that. Their team goes through hundreds of books each month and creates a curated selection for readers with new and early release titles so you can spend more time reading and less time researching. Plus, Book of the Month is risk-free, meaning you can skip any month anytime and not be charged. They also have the best price for new release hardcover fiction. You can get your first book for just $9.99 using the code Let's Go. This month I've been sent such a broad variety of literature that I cannot wait to sink my teeth into, especially The Maid. It's by Nita Prose and it's a mystery novel with a neurodivergent coded protagonist who accidentally stumbles across a murder. I am very excited to be collaborating with Book of the Month because it's very much in line with my mission as someone who endeavours to spread and cultivate mass love for books. And who doesn't love a curated box of books? So you can head to bookofthemonth.com to check out their picks and use the code Let's Go to get your first box from just $9.99. Now onto the video. This one is very heavily requested. I suppose it's just people asking me how I have time to read in my very busy lifestyle, how I make time to read, and why I consistently love reading. This video is detailing my steps, I suppose. Steps, if you will. I always forget to introduce myself, which is kind of important, considering how rapidly my audience is growing. Hi, I love you. I'm Dakota, and I study literature and creative writing. I'm an author. I like words. On to the steps. <laughs> Number one is to set realistic goals. So this is obviously entirely personal and up to you, but you need to be real with yourself. If you've never really been an avid reader, don't commit to a 100 book annual challenge. If you are an avid reader but you're picking up extra study or work this year, don't commit to a 100 book challenge. And if you do beat your goal early, that's always a magical feeling. There's nothing wrong with going over your goal. That's more motivating if anything, but I find if I'm under a goal that I set, I don't want to continue at all. It's all or nothing, baby. <laughs> Don't feel obliged to set yearly goals either. That works for some people, not everybody. A year is a very long time and that's a lot of commitment. I like to set weekly or daily goals, even if it's just pick up my book once, read 20 pages, read for 20 minutes. It doesn't have to be big and it all adds up to something. So work out your lifestyle and what it demands and what you can offer realistically. No amount is too small. No amount is too much, but just don't overwhelm yourself because then you'll be more inclined to step away. Curate a list of books that you really want to read. We are incredibly advantaged because we are in the internet era. It's advantages in this aspect, it's very much disadvantages in others, but that is not the point of this video. We have BookTok, BookTube, Goodreads, Bookstagram. We have everything. We have so much access to literary communities and make the most of it. These are all incredible platforms for watching people read, listening to people read, hearing people talk about reading, reading about people reading. <laughs> there are so many people that exist on the internet that spread and cultivate mass love and passion for literature and watch their videos and gain lists from them. Do some hunting and compile a list of books that you are genuinely interested in reading and start from there. If you so much as type fantasy book recommendations into the YouTube search bar, you will be met with an array of recommendations. And people speak about those so passionately and thoroughly that you can curate your list exactly as how you would like it. Whether you used to be an avid reader, you are an avid reader, or you have never really been interested in reading at all, the list is essential. It's called a TBR, FYI, for to be read. It's bookish lingo, bookish slang. Did you know that slang is slang for short language? There you have it. <laughs> if you don't love it, leave it. If you've given the book that you're reading a fair chance and you still despise it, put it down. You don't owe the book anything. If it's a book that's going to turn you off reading, 
in general, then it's not the book for you. This is somewhat hypocritical of me to say because I'm stubborn and if I hate a book I will still persist in hopes it will get better. But it's also my job to read and review books and recommend books, so I have an exception. <laughs> Don't be like me because sometimes I read things that are genuinely so horrible that it puts me in a slump and I won't be able to pick anything else up for a while. If a book hasn't got enough content and excitement or something to hook you by at least halfway through then it's just not a captivating book and that's okay to admit. If you put it down and pick up another book and can't stop thinking about it, go back to it. Everything's flexible, you're in control, there's no pressure, no one's telling you to do anything. If you want to fall in love with reading, then read books that you only love. I feel like that's a very overlooked but impossibly obvious point to make. <laughs> Keep a book on you at all times. Whether it's an ebook or a physical copy, if it's on you at all times, you are inherently a thousand times more likely to pick it up and read it. This also very much goes hand in hand with those tiny, minuscule opportunities to read that we often overlook because we didn't bring the book. Like I'm talking 15 minute train rides, half an hour lunch breaks, five minute waits in the grocery store line, doctor's office. If you have the book, you'll read it. And all these tiny increments of time add up to something. And it's nice to escape into your book even just if it's a few minutes. Any time slot is incredibly valuable, no matter how short or long. Don't feel obliged to uphold yourself to hour-long reading sprints. It's just not applicable for some people. Sacrifice a little time for reading here and there. Yes, I am mostly talking about your phone. Sacrifice just a little screen time, whether it's a television or an iPad or your laptop or your phone, just sacrifice a little bit. You don't need that much. This is perhaps the most obvious point to make, but it is also the most complex due to our mass technology addiction cultivated from a widespread indoctrinated belief of normalized technological consumption. That was too many words in a sentence. You understand what I'm getting at. I'm guilty. You know the nights where you sit down, open Instagram, and then it's two hours later and you're still on Instagram and have no idea how you've spent the last two hours on Instagram? Neither do I. All the nights where you watch movie after movie that you're not even really watching because you're on your phone. This is all valuable reading time. And it will feel strange at first, the adjustment period, but I don't even need to begin with the benefits of reading instead of using your phone. We all know that. It's just more so about applying that method. I promise you will relish in the softer space that literature will hold for you. Like your phone, literature can be a safe space. Like your phone, literature can be enriching and intellectual. Like your phone, literature can be a complete escape. I don't need to rave about the benefits of reading before bed. You know them. <laughs> we all know them. Quiet minds, better sleep, all that jazz. But most importantly, you retain the most information before you sleep. I learned this from my acting and theatre teachers. They've all said the same thing my whole life. Read scripts before bed because you'll learn them faster. So read before bed. I beg you. Join bookish communities. This is a good one. Whether it's joining a book club, winding up on book talk, following a bookstagram, participating in some chat channels, forums, whatever you call them. <laughs> An excellent platform for that is Goodreads. And no, I don't use Goodreads. <laughs> the irony. I made an account actually. I made an account and I do intend to use it this year. I have read books that I haven't uploaded yet, <laughs> but I will, maybe, probably. It is genuinely so motivating to surround yourself with people who are passionate and in love with literature. My passion doubled when I started my literature degree and all my classmates were in love with literature. My passion tripled when I started booktube and all of that stuff and found myself surrounded by people that have the same love or are trying to have the same love. I have been absolutely blessed with a platform to spread and cultivate a mass love for literature and writing and the arts and I am so honoured to be able to use that for its purpose. Annotate. Take notes. If the book isn't borrowed, stick stickers next to sentences that mean something to you. Highlight. Circle words that you want to learn. Cross out words that you don't like. <laughs> Annotating is my favourite way of really absorbing and appreciating literature and almost making it my own. Especially with classics, they can seem quite intimidating because there are words that you might not be familiar with or concepts that seem quite foreign or distant. But annotating absolutely 
breaks that down for you. I think extracting and pulling quotes from literature, whether it's just highlighting it or taking photos of it or rewriting it in my journal, that's for me the most powerful way to profess my love. You don't have to have a set method, don't overthink it. I don't have a set method. My technique is slightly better for books that I have to read for my degree. For books that I read for leisure, it's pure chaos. I will literally white out sentences that I don't think fit the book so it reads smoother in my mind. My pages are pure ink and coffee stains, dogged pages and cracked spines. I like my literature to look and feel loved in order for me to love it more, if that makes sense. Share and review what you have read. It is impossibly rewarding, especially when people actually value and care about what you have to say about literature. All of you tagging me in the books that I have recommended makes my day every single day. It's such a lovely feeling knowing that you are contributing single-handedly to somebody else's love for literature. It's unmatched, really. It's also an excellent way to keep track of what you've read and what you like, and you can reflect on that in the future and see what books made an impact on you. It's really nice. Okay, let me seal the deal for you now. You have officially fallen in love with literature and you look forward to reading every day. Maybe me saying it for you will make it come true. Maybe I've infused those words with some kind of magic, a literary alchemy if you will. I'm offering you some of my passion because it's infinite. Maybe I have a little too much. There's also a bunch of other points that I could make like go on reading dates with your friends, head to your local library, blah 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 blah, but they're all, we all know those, they all go without saying. I really hope that those steps helped because those steps are what I take to continue and develop my mass love for literature. If you have any tips that helped you on your journey to loving books and making time for them, please comment them below because the comment section of videos are such incredible communities as well. I will link my socials and my website and my blog and my book that's available for pre-order and all of that in the description box. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me. I love you and I'll see you next time. Thank you.